Hello everyone, welcome back to The Scrap Zone. I'm Julie. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some pretty awesome stamping techniques. Did you know that this month is National Stamping Month? Yep, you heard me right. So with this in mind, I decided to create a workshop around stamping. Take a look at this card. I'll get back to it in a second. We're going to do a couple of cards, a couple of layouts right here. This is the stamp set that I'm going to use. It is called Dragon Wishes and it is absolutely gorgeous. It comes with its own thin cuts and it also comes with this pretty cool card background. I really liked using all of these products and I thought, you know what, let's start with cards because we're going to need to practice this technique. It's called, or I'm calling it, vintage stamping. I'm going to use vintage photo, of course, and speckled egg. And I'm going to come back with a little mocha ink. And you're going to see how cool this technique is. You're also going to need distressed watercolor paper because you need a lot of water for this to work. And not all watercolor paper is the same. I've tested some out here. Uh, the one at the top is the one I'm using. This one here at the bottom is just regular cardstock. The one in the center was another brand of watercolor cardstock. So if you don't get the same results, it might be the watercolor cardstock or paper you're using. You're going to need a stamp positioner and, of course, water. So for card number one, we're going to use this beautiful flower image. And what's really important is that when you put your cardstock in, you're going to use the rough side and make sure that it's really nice and snug in that corner because we're going to have to go back. So I'm going to spritz this very lightly and then I'm going to use the vintage photo ink and I'm going to add a generous amount on my little image right here. And then I'm going to stamp that in and I'm going to hold that down because I really want the ink to soak in with the water into the cardstock. So I'm just going to press that in. And your image is not going to be crisp. It's going to be kind of faded into the cardstock. And here I'm adding quite a bit of water and you can see that it's kind of distorting the image a little bit. So this was the first one or the first series that I did and I thought, oh, that's too much. So I decided to blot some of the water off just to let it dry. But you'll see as I progress and get more comfortable with this technique that adding more water and just letting it dry to me work the best. You have the best results. So you will get a lot of water on your positioner and uh, I just kind of wipe it in between. The thing that you have to remember is that when you start creating this workshop, you have to keep that image in the misty door and not move it. So right now I'm really cleaning it off because I don't want to contaminate my dye based ink. So I'm going to bring back these images here and if they're not quite dry, definitely you can heat them up with a heat tool and uh, I just was impatient because there's a few steps to this technique so you have to stamp with the oxide ink with a lot of water then let it dry and then you come back with the mocha ink which will really define that image again so I'm pressing that in nice and firmly and let me show you isn't that cool like you've got that look at the back that is all kind of vintagey. I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but I just thought it was really, really um, a fun technique to try. I'm going to go through a few images here with you. And this image here has more solid pieces to it. So when you add your spritz of water, you'll see that the Distress Oxide ink really, really moves on this one here. So you, And I did add quite a bit of water and you'll see that just here. Like I can really move that um, 
ink all over the background of this image and I will you know just soak up some of the extra water right here just at the edge but I will set that aside as is and I will let this dry completely so you will have to kind of wipe up your little misty every once in a while but see when you have a lot of water you get this really cool background effect with the distress oxide ink and that was with quite a bit of water I'm gonna bring in the mocha ink once again and we're going to define the image so right now you could leave it as is but I find that when you come back and you restamp that image exactly at the same location this is what you get and that looks pretty cool to me I hope you like it too now I've got my little dragonflies here and this here I'm gonna do like a little assembly line type of stamping so I've got my little cardstock or my cut cardstock I've got some here for the medium one and they must be somewhere on my desk for the large one but it's important that you actually take the time to cut them because you always have to put them in the corner every time so when you add your little dragonfly and you pick it up with your misty door you're gonna go through what I like to call step one which is doing the distress oxide and the water and you keep it, your little dragonfly right here and then you let those dry and then you go back and you do step two which is adding the mocha ink so you can tell here that I'm doing like a little assembly I'm adding water so I'm spritzing a couple like two pumps pushing that in letting it absorb into the paper and then just spritzing it again until it really moves and then I just set it aside and let it dry or do its magic basically the oxide ink and the watercolor paper will react together and you get that more like smeared kind of look and that's what you're going for so when you start doing this technique you're probably gonna think oh this looks like a hot mess but trust me when you go back and you stamp with the mocha ink right on top that's where you get that really cool vintage look once you're done with all of the stamping, you're going to go ahead and die cut all of your images. And I am bringing in this background elements that come with the card set. And I wanted to add a little ink blending on the background. So I'm going to start from the bottom left corner and I'm going to go all the way across to the top. And what I like about this is that it really shows those swirls in the background and it looks really nice and it complements that brown as I mentioned before I did three cards and two layouts all of those will be time stamped in the description down below and if you want to skip forward and see how the layouts came together you can go ahead and skip through all of the process that I'm doing right now with the cards but I do like to work on cards first because it kind of gives me an idea of how the technique is going to work since I'm working on the backgrounds, I thought that it would be a good idea to do background number two for card number two because I'm doing all of the ink blending and it's just a little bit of a time saver here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the speckled egg on a diagonal. So I'm starting with the lightest shade and I'm going to ink blend that with the vintage photo. And at first I thought, is that going to work like the blue and the brown and it absolutely looks fantastic so you're going to have to stick around and see so i'm adding the brown right here and you can tell that that's much richer and deeper and uh, i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to blend it all the way up to the blue and then i'm going to go back and blend the two together so when you're doing ink blending it does take a little bit of time and don't be fooled by this video here where I've sped up that process. It does take a little of time, but it is totally worth it. So right here, you can tell that if I would leave it like that, the blending is not happening. So I'm going back with the speckled egg and then I'm just really blending those two colors together. And 
I really like that look. It goes with that vintage feel of that blue and that brown. And here I'm going to spritz, but I'm doing like a half pump. And when you pull the trigger on your water bottle and you don't go all the way in, you get these big splotch of waters. And uh, look at that. Like, I don't know, it's so magical, this ink. Like it does all of these really cool things. And I really, really liked the way this background looked. But I'm going to have to set that aside and let it dry, which was a good opportunity for me to let these little pieces dry right here. So these were the ones that I stamped previously with the vintage photo and I set them aside to dry and now that they're completely dry I can go back with the mocha ink and I can stamp directly into it because that's part of card number one and I was just trying to find a rhythm as to okay when do I do all of these things because of the water you need to let each of those pieces dry. So I'm just using here an A2 size card and we're going to quickly assemble this together. You see here that I've matted all of my little stamped images with mocha cardstock and I'm just going to add them to my card front and I think it looks really cute. Like it's got that old world look to it. Now this can totally be done with brighter colors but this is the direction that I went into and I'll tell you about that in a little bit a little bit later in the video why I chose the browns. But for now I added my little dragonfly with pop dots underneath their wings and then the center is glued down directly just to give them a little bit of movement. I really like the way that this card turned out. So let's put together card number two with this great image right here. Don't you love that background? And this background here, I love how I let that ink run on that panel. It kind of looks like either a sunrise or a sunset. It kind of has that golden color to it. And that was just with the vintage photo, believe it or not. So I thought that I would add a little bit of blue splatters onto this panel just to bring in the two elements together. And to be honest with you here, I thought, uh oh, I think I've ruined it. Like those splatters are really, really big. And that's fine. If you do that, you can just kind of soak them up and they will fade into the panel and then you can use something to tap with. Usually when I tap with like either a pen or here you see that I'm using my bone folder, you get smaller splatters. So I wasn't a hundred percent with it, but I kept going. And now that I'm putting all of this card together, I think that it looks really, really good. It still has that vintage look, that distress look. So let's finish off this card with that cute sentiment that's been put on with uh, 3D foam tape. And we're going to move right along to card number three. And of course, I had to introduce a slimline card. So this one here is really pretty and it comes together really nicely. So we've got the background right here, which is white. So I'm going to ink distress that background to bring in that blue. So I'm just adding little lines here just to give me an idea as to where I need to distress. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and ink blend, I should say, not distressing, but ink blending. And I'm just going to add that to the panel. So very quickly here, and this doesn't have to be uh, done with care. We just want to get the color on. So it's a little bit of uh, all over the place. But once you put that panel right at the front, as long as all of those circles are covered, you are good. So I think that that looks really great. So I did go ahead and I stamped a few of those images and by strategically placing that circle in different section of that stamped image, you get different flowers. And I thought that that was pretty neat. So see here, they look like they're different stamps, but it's the same stamp. I just kind of moved my circle around just to get a different part of that image. So those are going to go 
into the circles or into the holes I should say and I'm going to add my little dragonflies and I think that this looks pretty good so you've got the flowers in the back the dragonflies and that cute little sentiment right at the bottom so now that we've played with lots of water the stress oxides let's apply some of these techniques to scrapbook layouts and I'm going to bring in this mix-in paper pack to create my two layouts here is layout number one and I've gone ahead and I've put a lot of it together I've done the left side right here and I'll go over that process and I'm gonna walk you through a few steps to creating this layout now the first thing you want to do is you want to kind of map out how those little dragonflies are gonna fit at the top this piece of mocha cardstock is is just like a frame right and usually you would say okay let's hollow that out because we don't waste all of that cardstock and I agree with you but if you're going to do this distressing technique I found that it was easier to do the technique first hollow it out after and then do the ink blending so I'm bringing in speckled egg on the distressed edge right here because it's white the blue is going to show with which is really really nice and then I'm going to tack that down and I really really like working with my Versamat right here it really helps when I'm trying to line up everything making sure that I've got my quarter inch all the way around it's a true time saver I'm going to add my two pieces right here so this white piece I'm going to go ahead and create that really pretty background and I'm going to show you that in one sec. So let's clear off the mats and flip that over. We're going to use the back side so that it's easier to stamp on. And I did mark off where all of those lines are going to go on this cardstock right here. You probably can't see it in the video, but they're just faint little lines. I'm going to bring in my new favorite background stamp which is called background elements and this one does not disappoint I've said this before do not underestimate the power of either a good pattern paper or a great stamp set and this one here since it's national stamping month of course I thought I would bring it in and really customize the background for both of the next layouts that you're going to see so I'm stamping these lines here and I'm rotating the stamp so that I've got a different image every time and I'm stamping on those lines that have been pre-measured and you're probably thinking oh the spacing isn't right but once I add my little dragonflies you'll see that it works out perfectly and I find that with distress oxide ink you can just spritz the back of your mat and just wipe it off and it wipes off really really nice now I'm not sure if dye based ink would work the same but this one here the distress oxide definitely does so I'm going to bring in the vintage photo again and I'm random stamping in a line and I'm doing three generations I'm starting with the first generation right at the top I'm rotating my stamp second generation and third generation I just want that to cascade from the top and go later as it goes down and this stamp set when you rotate it it fits into itself so that's a really good thing if you want to do this technique right here so I really like the way that this is turning out and when I add my dragonflies to this it just looks like they're flying down and highlighting all of the pictures on my page all right so one last spritz clean off my little mess clean off the back of my mat and then we are going to add a little bit of distressing here so I'm going to just go back in and add a little bit of ink distressing to all of the edges just to complete that piece alright so now we can bring back the layout so 
So I'm going to tack that right here at the top. And then I'm going to add my pieces together for you. So this goes right here at the top. I'm adding my little dragonflies. So I am curling their little wings down. And I am adding 3D foam tape on the back side of the wings only. I also add a little bit of glue on the body so that that stays down. And you can see here that all of those dragonflies have been, you know, spaced out to create this really cool effect at the top of the layout. I'm going to add a couple more of those dies right here. I'm just going to tack them loosely on that 4x6 photo. And this is the completion of layout number one. Right? Don't underestimate a good background stamp. I think that it looks pretty neat. So we're going to move right along to layout number two. And uh, you can see here that I'm still using the mix-in papers and I don't have a lot of paper. Like it's mostly a white background. So I'm going to bring in some inks and my background element stamp here. And I'm going to customize my base pages to suit the vintage look I was going for first thing I like to do is ink distress everything because I don't know about you guys but I usually get ink all over my fingers and all over my project so all of the base pieces have been ink distress in mocha and then I'm going to flip my mat over once again I've already done my little lines which I'm not sure if you can see in the video but I want to add some speckle egg right here on the left hand side and I'm going to use a different image so I'm going to stamp that all along. I'm going to pick up my image right here. And I don't know if this has happened to you before, but if there's like a little air bubble underneath, that will interfere with your stamping. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so you saw me just pulling that back and pressing that in nice and firmly. And then I'm going to go ahead here and I am going to stamp that image all along the edge here of the page and I will be rotating you know from back to front or front to back or upside down upside right whatever you want to call it I am rotating that stamp and I am creating a really cool border so I think that that looks pretty sharp and when I add my dragonflies it's gonna give them a really nice background and you've got that beautiful contrast from the blues and the browns. So here at the top, I am going to add another um, kind of background stamp. So I'm just kind of doing a dry fit here because I want to see how that's going to look. And um, I think that that's going to look pretty good. Now remember, we just have white. So I'm going to stamp here at the top. I'm going to bring this closer. Hmm, you know what, I'm going to flip this over so that my head is not in the way and I'm just going to stamp this nice image right here. So this goes at the top. I'm going to do the same for the other side, which um, I did the right, this is the left. And I, you saw me there, I just marked off on top of the cut pattern paper and I want to add a little ink blending. So when you look at these backgrounds, you're going to say, wow, like there's a lot going on. But if you map it out before you glue everything down, it actually is great. So I actually had to think about this because usually these thoughts come to me after the fact. But in this case, I was, you know, smart enough not to glue down my pattern papers and add all of the ink blending, all of the stamping, and then I can come back and I can add all of my pieces right here. So I think that that looks really cool considering we have minimal amount of pattern paper and it was a white background because I really wanted these little dragonflies here to be front and center. You have to remember that once you add your photos to this layout, it's going to look great. So these are going to be great to document cottage vacation, camping vacation, your garden, 
There's so many possibilities because dragonflies are pretty universal and these muted colors are going to accentuate the photos that you add on these layouts. So these are the two completed layouts. This was layout number one. I really like the way that that turned out as well. And we can't forget those cards we did at the beginning. So we've got a slimline card right here. We've got this great A2 size card and the very first card we did together. So I really hope that you've enjoyed all of the stamping tips and tricks that I've shared with you here today. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to join. And here's another video that I think you might just like. Have yourself a fantastic day and I will catch you in the next video.